Listen up. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in this podcast belong solely to the podcast participants and not to any participants, employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. You know, for fun. So lighten up and enjoy. Stomping Jen. You sound so ominous when you say that. Really? For fun. Oh, yeah. I want to re-record that. No, don't. I love it. Oh, you do? (laughs) Should I make it more ominous? (laughs) Well, speaking of ominous, we have a really fascinating guest and topic that we're going to talk about on this episode. We're going to be talking to Assistant Professor Zach McDowell about a book that he co-authored. This book is called Wikipedia and the Representation of Reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is this is some heavy stuff, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. I'm going to try to ask some thoughtful um, interrogatives. <laughs> Those are questions. Yes, I got that. Okay. Thank um, you. So, um, put on your thinking cap. All right. Okay. I'm going to have to put on two. This is, this is, this is interesting, interesting, deep stuff. Okay. Okay. We're Uh going to, we're, we're going to dive into the pool. Okay. All right. Okay. You ready? Uh Uh-huh. All right. Let's go. Creamy, delicious ideas without the creepy truck. Stomping Jen, we're here to talk about the encyclopedia (laughs) called Wikipedia. (laughs) Say that five times fast. I know. I couldn't think of a rhyme, but... What um, rhymes with encyclopedia? Only Wikipedia. Centipedia. No. Multimedia. Multimedia. There you go. Yeah. Um, speaking. Wikipedia is a multimedia encyclopedia. Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk to our guest, um, okay. Assistant Professor Zach McDowell. Hello, Zach. Hey, how are you all doing? Really good. How are you doing? I'm uh, doing pretty good. It's uh, it's lovely here in Chicago. And you are a professor at the University of Illinois at Chicago, am I correct? That is correct, in the Department of Communication. Okay. Um, I want to just start a little bit. I introduced the fact that you wrote this book called Wikipedia and the Representation of Reality. Um, and I want to understand a little bit more as a professor and an academic, how you got interested in this area of study? Well, uh, that's a that's a really great question because uh, uh, Wikipedia is not really one of those things that uh, most people think is, you know, academically interesting. Uh, you know, at least those of us who aren't academics, you know, uh, don't really find it that interesting. Uh, uh, because they, most people think you're not supposed to use it or it's, you know, it's not factual or whatnot. And I actually got interested in uh, Wikipedia about a decade ago when I was uh, teaching as a graduate student. And I was looking for a way in which my students could have authentic writing experiences with a real audience and actually learn how to research things and summarize information in ways that they could, uh, they had other people that could read, you know, their, their work. Cause, uh, really the way that we teach writing is often, you know, the students recognize that it, it, it's read by one person. It's given a grade and kind of goes into the bin afterwards. And, and so they, they, they get that it's, it's this kind of game. Whereas uh, when they start interacting with something that they know, 
Uh, not only is, are the stakes higher and they are, get more invested, they care more, right? Because there's, they, they can do something that uh, has an effect, but it also helps shape the way in which they understand the, the systems of information that they're working with, which, you know, Wikipedia is, everyone knows it needs no introduction. It's the largest uh, encyclopedia ever, uh, largest body of knowledge ever uh, constructed in the, on the face of the earth. And it, everyone uses it. It's the top hit for most things when you Google it or, you know, whatever search engine you're using. So it, it, it's this, you know, behemoth that most people have been told that, you know, is not really accurate or, you know, don't use it or uh, don't cite it, of course. Um, but most people don't know how it works. Yeah. And it's, it's there that it's there. It is constructing, you know, what is the go-to for most people's queries but most people have no idea how it operates. When did when did Wikipedia start? Is this a an artifact of the early internet? Like, did it did it come along a little bit later? It it is. Uh, it, it this year is actually it's celebrating its twentieth anniversary, which makes it a dinosaur in internet age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting. <laughs> I, it, <laughs> That's how long we've been married. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Thank you, Stump and Jen. <laughs> I mean, for people, it's not that long. But for the internet, nice, I mean... <laughs> nice try. <laughs> uh, no, we're dinosaurs. That's um, okay. Yeah, or at least our our relationship is a dinosaur. Yes. Thank um, you. No, what I was uh, what I was going to ask you, um, Zach, was um, you were talking about, um, and in the book. You address this, um, your book, Wikipedia and the Representation of Reality. You you talk about how, for a long time, um, teachers and um, others told folks to stay away from Wikipedia as a source of information. Um, has that perception changed? I, I often wonder with a high school... I have a high school student who lives with us. Um, Ted is his podcast name. and. Mm-hmm. He's on this Wikipedia constantly, Stumping Jen. I don't know. He's constantly searching for information. He's always searching, and I think he's on Wikipedia. So um, can you just tell us a little bit about have have those perceptions about Wikipedia as a um, source, source of, of information, information evolved over time? Uh, yes and no. Yeah. So um, in one aspect, uh, they have because more people are using it. Right? Mm-hmm. So there's this kind of, um, you know, people will say one thing and do the other, uh, which is often the case in, in, in much of, you know, civilization. Uh, but, and, 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 and on the, and the same case also, it has become the go-to place where information is sourced for a lot of these big search, search engines, right? Like when uh, it, uh, the information powers a lot of kind of like, uh, Alexa stuff or, you know, Siri and all these types of, uh, uh, you know, uh, systems where that information that comes from Wiki- is, is directly coming from Wikipedia, right? Um, so the summary of what a thing is and whatnot. So in, in that aspect, yes. But on the aspect of do people actually think uh, out loud about like, how did they feel about it? I don't actually think so. And, uh, you know, there, there's there's probably definitely some shift, but uh, all of the research that I've done, all of the interviews that I've done with students over the years, and, and um, you know, this book has come not only out of uh, teaching, but also a huge uh, amount of research. And I've co-authored a series of articles with, uh, with, with Matthew Vetter as well, who is my co-author on this book. Uh, we're good friends and we, you know, we sit around and geek, around, geek out on Wikipedia and write stuff. So, um, you know, we've done a ton of research and we've, we've gone through a lot of people's research and it, and it really comes down to the same thing is that uh, students are constantly saying to us, we were told not to use it. Right. And, um, so years ago, I, I when I would start when I started kind of presenting on this kind of research, uh, I used to joke that um, uh, abstinence only Wikipedia education doesn't work because <laughs> they're told not to use it, right? right? They're told not to use it, but like they've literally got it in their pockets. Mm-hmm. So they're like, so the the question is, 
how, what is the relationship with information people have when they're constantly or with anything, right? You know, this is, you know, the obvious thing here is about like abstinence only sex, right? It's guess what? They're also having sex, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, so, so, but the, this is why the, we're like, Hey, we got to teach them about it because you're using it and you're either trusting stuff you shouldn't, or you're not trusting stuff you should. Right. Yeah. So how, what is that kind of relationship and how does that come out with this kind of uh, uh, two sided kind of uh, uh, way of thinking? And are your students surprised when they come in with this perception that Wikipedia is something that they shouldn't use or trust in a academic environment like like a college? And then you ask them to to use it in learning and you're teaching with it in some cases. Right. I mean, are they surprised by that? Absolutely. Uh, so, and, and so, but what ends up coming out of it is, uh, you know, it's the trust, but verify kind of thing. Cause if I teach you how to use Wikipedia and like my whole goal is to help you understand how these kind of, uh, uh pages come together and teach you about information, uh, you know, value and all these different things. I don't want you to just come out of that and go, Oh yeah, I trust Wikipedia because that's actually not very critical. Right. right. That's yeah. that's just like me saying, go do this. And then you're like, OK, um, what I want them to do is have a greater and deeper understanding of how to assess information. Right. And this is like main components of information literacy. And uh, the. What really comes down, it comes down to is that, like, in the end, they're surprised because they did not realize how difficult it was to edit Wikipedia and how much goes into it. And they are taken aback by that experience and they take that forward with them and not just a, Oh, Hey, good. I get to do this thing because they, I still tell them they can't cite Wikipedia because it's a tertiary source of information. Right. Just like you shouldn't be sourcing encyclopedia Britannica either. <laughs> right. Go to the original source and guess what? Wikipedia has links. You can do that too. Yeah, and that that's one of the first things I check when I look at a Wikipedia article. I scroll down and say, okay, does it have a lot of references here, right? And if and that's one thing I look at before I go any further with an article, unless it's about something like completely silly, then I implicitly trust it, which lead which is probably not the right thing to do, which leads me to my question. I want to read something out of your book, um, Zach. And I think it's a good way to kind of launch into some of what your your book tries to tackle. Um, so I'm going to read this. Um, Wikipedia functions as a space that not only defines the boundaries of what is knowable, so what is knowledge, but also shapes how we know through the ways in which it allows the collection and distribution of knowledge. That's a lot. I had to think about that. I had to think about that a long time to really try to understand it. And my my um, layperson's understanding of this, right? Because stomping Jen, I am not an academic. You know this, right? So I'm going to try to I'm going to put my lens on this, which is that. Um, so Wikipedia, um, through its existence now as the go-to encyclopedia, the go-to repository of knowledge, right, of human knowledge, by existing, it is in some ways saying, this is all the knowledge, right? And um, in doing that, though, there's this kind of... Um, unseen question about how the knowledge got there, right? And um, how did it get in, in there? And there are lots of things to unpack about that, how the knowledge got into there. So, um, and it has lots of processes and rules that govern how that knowledge gets into what we consider to be all of the world's knowledge. <laughs> and I've not clarified this anyway, so we're going to go to our expert, um, <laughs> Zach. Isn't that why we have him here? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, uh, I, I mean, I did write that sentence, so uh, <clears throat> I, 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 I might not be as much help as you, you think I will be, but uh, let me try. Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 
So uh, Wikipedia has this kind of, um, so first of all, uh, you're not wrong. Uh, one of the things is about like, what, how did this information get here? Right. Right. But I want to, I also say, you know, whenever we kind of think about what is here, we also want to ask what is not here mm. and why, right. Not as just what is here and why, but also what is not here and why. Right. And uh, so it both, when I say that it, it, it defines, you know, what is knowledge um, I'm referring to really kind of, um, how it defines what is able to be put in, right? Which, which we cover kind of uh, under kind of reliability and verifiability and as well as uh, notability, which is a big about what gets in, right? And what gets excluded. Uh, but the, what it really comes down to is if the, the lay person, you know, as you were saying, the lay person, the, the simple experience is if you look for something and it's not there, does it count? Right. That, right. What, right. What is the value of that? If it's, if you've got a thousand articles on Pokemon, but a, uh, 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 a famous, uh, uh, a uh, person of color or woman who is a scientist is not in there. Right. Yeah. And why, why does that happen? Right. And, and so trying to pull that apart and looking at how this happens uh, for uh, the encyclopedia that it's, it's goal is to, you know, collect and distribute the sum of the world's knowledge for free, which is literally yeah. impossible. <laughs> And in, in all languages, in all languages, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, other Wikipedias, uh, and, and this book doesn't deal with it as much because we're really focusing on English Wikipedia because it's the biggest and like by far. And a lot of the critiques of other Wikipedias um, can, we can kind of, there's it, it, a lot of them are encapsulated within the English Wikipedia as well. But then there are other issues around participation and, uh, you know, uh, 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 representation in other languages as well. So the, the, and, and it gets more complicated because each Wikipedia runs separately, but they mostly have very similar rules, but they're not all the same. And going through all of them, we'd be here for years. Yeah. And honestly, I don't know all of them because yeah. it's, it's, they're, they're very complicated. There's a lot of different groups and a lot of languages. Yeah. So. In, in, in theory, and I, I'm going to stress in theory, Stomping Gen, anybody is supposed to be able to go in and uh, create Wikipedia articles or edit them, I think. Um, but that's not what ha – from reading your book, what I, what I learned um, is that's not what's actually happening. Um, there's a um, – there's definitely um, a um, bias in the Wikipedia editing community towards – um, white males, right? Most of the editors in Wikipedia are are white males. And Do they get pa paid? Who owns no. Wikipedia? Uh, so it Wikipedia is run by a nonprofit foundation called the Wikimedia Foundation. Okay, and um, they uh, they uh, keep the so they develop the software that runs Wikipedia, which is also released under Creative Commons license. It's open, open access, open source kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they keep the servers running, they raise money. So then community groups can uh, seek out grants. Um, there's a lot of different, there's the, there's a huge amount of uh, like bureaucracy mm -hmm. uh, that goes in, but it's, it's, it's community driven. Right. The, the foundation there is really to there to like raise money, uh, maintain the servers, maintain the software. So they've got a lot of people working for them, but they're not. And, and those people do edit Wikipedia, just not as an employee. OK, right? they mm -hmm. edit it as they, they're like, I have taken my employee hat off and I'm now putting on my editor hat, my volunteer editor hat, um, because uh, Wikipedians are uh, volunteers now. Uh, for the longest time, there were never such like talking about paid editors even would like, you know, get like shocks from uh, Wikipedians. There have been people who have now been, quote unquote, uh, allowed to be paid editors, but it's 
because uh, uh, it's been a first of all, it's been a long, long argument. Uh, but second of all, they have to they're they have to be very open about it. And they have to uh, follow a lot of very specific rules because they've realized that um, sometimes uh, it is necessary for uh, for uh, places that you know need things edited correctly, accurately to have someone that is versed in this complicated community to be able to navigate that for them, and that labor is 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 valuable. Right. Mm-hmm. And it is OK to compensate someone for that. What they are concerned about. And there was a huge backlash for this is kind of PR editing. Right. Uh, and there's been a lot of that over history. There's a lot of really funny ones like uh, uh, Burger King did something uh, just to get OK Google to like announce it. You know, and they edited the the first line, which is exactly what Google will read off. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and it was totally, it, it was really obvious. There was a whole article about like this, and they, you know, kind of got shamed by the internet. And and Wikipedia Foundation actually came to a settlement with a whole PR firm and and created like a list of like how you need to interact with Wikipedia in an ethical manner. So there's actually a really interesting kind of history of like paid editorship and like how people have uh, uh, kind of uh, tried to get around that and how how the uh, it's been renegotiated and, and moved forward in a way that can satisfies everybody's needs, or at least maybe only s- uh, slightly satisfies everyone's, you know, kind of needs. <laughs> do you know do, when you're, is, um, an article that's been edited by somebody who's been paid for it, is that indicated some way on the article? It should be edit, uh, indicated um, by the, uh, by th- that the editor themselves on their page uh, is paid, is yeah. paid uh, for. And also a lot of times these people who are, for example, um, there's a, they have a big rule about conflict of interest, which is exactly where paid, paid editorship uh, the issue comes around. And so people announcing their conflict of interest is really important. And there are actually uh, people who are like, hey, look, I work for Halliburton, right? Or I work for, you know, whatever company. And instead of making edits, what they do is they leave messages on the talk page saying, hey, this is actually inaccurate. Here's the link to the information. Please, could somebody please update this? You know, I am, mm-hmm. a, I am an employee of this, you know, and, and, and so they try to do it in a way that's transparent, which yeah. uh, is, it, you know, this is how we should do it. Right. Like, you know, uh, don't, because this is how you can help build trust in that information is that like, look, uh, I've been, this source is verifiable, right. You know, it's a reliable verifiable source and you can point that to that information somewhere else so that somebody can fact check it. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's the idea. Yeah. And, and when it comes to editing and editors, um, Wikipedia has this ethos called be bold. Right. And you talk, yeah. a, you talk a lot in your book about um, how that is a nice idea, but in reality, it can be in problematic and something you saw emerge in your students and something that's been reflected more broadly in the editor community, um, that the be bold is harder in implementation than it is in idea. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. And, and to, to segue, like, let, let, let's skip back to your previous question. Cause I, I ended up, uh, uh, responding to Jen instead, because this actually links directly in yep. there. Uh, the idea of, um, the reason, one of the things about the, uh, the start of Wikipedia is that there was there was a lot of stuff to do, <clears throat> right? In early Wikipedia, there's a lot of articles to write. Yeah. It was kind of a little bit. It was much more of a wild west, right? People were loosey goosey with the rules. Everybody's kind of learning, and it was this is you know again it's twenty years old. Think back to two thousand one, and what I want you to think about is you because know, when we when you know, when we say like Wikipedia is mostly written by a bunch of white men, I want I want to kind of like, couch that uh, because like it's really easy to like, especially within history, to kind of like it's shooting fish in a barrel to be like, well, that was written by white men. Well, guess what? Who was able to write most of history? Right. Yeah. You know, like like let's be more. It's not a wrong critique, but let's be more. Let's understand that better is what I want. Yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to do here. And <clears throat> and the. um 
the thing with uh, Wikipedia is it was started by the same type of people who are kind of like these techno libertarians. And, and, and I, and I say that in, or in techno utopians too, right? Like the idea that like information should be free and things like that. And it, the, all of these are like, you know, everybody should participate and these are great ideas, right? Like they're wonderful, like banners to like wave around. But uh, what it comes down to is that uh, in 2001, and through most of Wikipedia's history, uh, who do you think has the time and energy and education uh, and access to the internet to spend their time writing a general knowledge encyclopedia for fun? Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and it's not single mothers. It's not uh, people working three jobs. It's not, you know, it's, it lent itself very much towards uh, single white men between the ages of 18 and 35 uh, with some, uh, or a, with some college experience or more. Uh, and that was kind of the demographic that kind of came out of some of the early surveys. Now, again, uh, this is all self-report. So <clears throat> who knows exactly what the numbers are, but it has been, it, people think it's anywhere between like 85 and 90% or so <clears throat> of, uh, of uh, editors over history have been uh, within that kind of like uh, demographic, at least for the English Wikipedia. So, so we, but we, again, like we have to understand, like, this is also the issue with volunteer uh, right. work, right? Yeah. Who has excess time and expertise to be able to navigate that? And even if, and again, I am a Wikipedian. I'm, you, you know, you, the, the readers can't see me, but, uh, uh, or the listeners can't see me, but I, I am a white guy. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've, uh, I've been to a lot of Wikipedia meetings, uh, you know, these meetups and gatherings like the, um, uh, you know, the conferences and such. And these are really nice people. Right. And, 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 and again, these are the people who actually show up too, which is like a, also a, a subset of a subset of a subset of a mm -hmm. group. Um, and, and they're very concerned with representation. They're very concerned with all these things. But again, um, if I'm writing about the things that I want to write about, it has to do with the things that I also have experience about, right? So, you know, this is why you end up with a lot of, a lot of uh, articles about Pokemon or battleships or, you know, World War II kind of stuff. And not a lot about kind of like, feminist media theory. Um, but that's, that's changing, right? Uh, Cause we're, we're, we're working on that, but this is kind of the history of Wikipedia is, is well-intentioned, but ultimately when you have a party and say, everyone's invited and then people show up and it's a bunch of rules lawyering white guys who are like, well, are you sure you want to edit that? Uh, you, you, don't, you didn't use the proper, you know, structure and like, and, and as, as we all know, like things can come off very terse on the internet sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Like, right. It's not, it's not like we're all just kind of like hanging out at a party and somebody's like, Hey, I want to make that. Oh, well, let me help you out. Um, you know, it can be a little bit more terse. And especially when, uh, when editors are used to people vandalizing so much, they also have like kind of like an innate reaction to somebody who's doing something badly as like they're vandalizing and uh, I'm going to revert it, and this isn't worthwhile, and blah 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 blah. Does that happen? So, Does that happen a lot? That kind of vandalization of content on Wikipedia? Abs absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It happens. Con and and actually, uh, 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 right now, like bots handle a lot of these. They they scan for kind of like trigger words, you know, swear words, and things like that. And like, there's literally like you know, like there's been like swastikas go on pages or just like, you know, uh, curse words or, or, or whatnot. And, and I will say that for the most part, these things get reverted, which is changed back. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and in seconds. So, um, and, and if it becomes a problem, the, the, the articles get locked for uh, you have to kind of like move up the, the ladder in, in security. Uh, and, and people can't edit unless they've like been an established editor for long enough. Um, and I'm sorry, uh, let's come back to uh, what was the rest of that question? <laughs> um, it, it was about um, your be bold, the being bold. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. 
So be bold. So this is, again, uh, this is this idea that like one should like be bold as they go into the world. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, as, as a, a professor who teaches, you know, communication, most of my students, or at least a majority of my students have identified uh, as female or, or at least have identified as not male. Right. Um, <clears throat> and I have gotten a lot of kind of conversation about like, this was very uncomfortable for me, right? Because this is, does not come naturally. And <clears throat> the idea of being bold or that like, it's going to be okay if you just like go at it um, is, is, you know, let's just be honest. It's a very masculine idea. Right. Yeah. Uh, and or and and I don't mean that that's some sort of innateness. I just mean that's how it's taught. Right. Like being bold is like something that uh, is taught uh, that like, oh, this is little boys should go be bold and kind of thing. So I've heard over and over again that this is not something that a lot of people identify with that are not male. And And let's be honest, not a lot of, you know, not every, you know, little boy identifies that way either. Um, but it is definitely something that has kind of come up in, uh, amongst my students and amongst uh, uh, some of my colleagues' students that, like, this just is not something that they can really kind of it resonates with them. And it's <clears throat> and not only that, but when they're told to be bold and then they and you finally get them to go be bold and make the edit, because at some point, like, you have to do the thing. Right. Yeah. Like, if you're going to write a book, you have to start by writing words down on a page, right? Like you have to, you have to write, uh, you have to do the thing. Um, but like when you're, when you have to get over like five or six hurdles to get yourself to be able to be bold, and then you're immediately shot down, it's even more crushing. Do those shoot downs happen like in a public way for people or do they happen in like those forums you were describing before like well, like i'm thinking it's it's so weird because i'm thinking about how obnoxiously bold i see people be on platforms like facebook or other places like they have no problem like being like you know yeah you know fuck you you know mm -hmm. such and such um and i, I wonder if it's I don't know. It's it's so strange to me that I can I can that um that would be a issue on a knowledge repository, which feels like less high stakes to me. But I I don't know. Is there is there something around how around the medium that is challenging right. for people because it's a because it's a it's a knowledge medium. Are you trying to say like Facebook is like it's full of goosey and like trolls and like yeah. people like stating misinformation left and right? Is that what you're trying to say? I'm just saying I see people of all of like all genders like not having a problem in you know like being yeah. out there and just, just saying like what, go fuck yourself. Saying, <laughs> Thank you, Stomping Jen. Yes, <laughs> I you know. But they don't do that on Wikipedia. Is that what you're trying to say? I think Wikipedia yeah. like seems more prestigious than like a Facebook yeah. forum. Yeah. yeah, and it's also less ephemeral. Right. Right. It it's like a, um, I have come here to contribute to a body of knowledge, not um, uh, you know, post my new favorite TV show. I think that's what I'm saying. Uh, that's inherently that right. that feels inherently higher stakes, right? And like scarier. Wikipedia feels more formal like a uh, scarier for people not scarier i wouldn't say it that way it's okay. like the difference between a textbook and a comic book okay yeah and 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 i would say that uh it feels like um it's there is a mission to wikipedia obviously and when people see that there it is there is a um a a, a, a form about you know and 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 all forms have some sort of kind of you know formalism right yeah. like there is a form to wikipedia that is you know as as stomping jen says uh kind of you know uh it's it's not scary it's more like there's it's more formal right it's less loosey-goosey it's uh but 
what happens, and and I would say that the, the publicness of getting your stuff shot down is not necessarily the same kind of like, you know, screaming, yelling, you know, uh, reducto ad Hitlerum kind of stuff, but <laughs> uh, it, 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 it does. Um, I would say that I, I've definitely seen students like completely defeated yeah. because they actually put like real effort into doing it and trying to learn and trying to learn the language and trying to like figure out how to navigate the space and, and how to make that edit and like editing that sentence a bunch of times and stuff like that. And then somebody will just revert it. Right. They'll just be like, Nope. And they'll like leave a note. They're like, this wasn't, you know, right. Or blah, blah, blah. And then um, if they're nice, they'll go and post on the talk page of the student or on the talk page of the page and say, like, you know, I I reverted this edit because, you know, this was the problem. But if they're not nice, they just revert it and then just move on. And then we look, you know, then that it's best to be able to have, you know, folks like myself or uh, other people who like teach with Wikipedia to be able to step in and say, hey, why is this that happened? Like, let's go look at it. Let's see if we can fix this and be able to like help move them forward. Because a lot of time, if you like get all, I mean, can you imagine if you like got all, all the nerve to finally like, you know, you're like, Oh, I really want to make this contribution about like my favorite author or somebody who doesn't have a lot of stuff. And I have this neat thing that I want to like put in there to help everyone else who comes to this page, be able to see this. And then like you, you put all this, like, you know, you spend all evening, like, doing the research and all the things. And then like you wake up in the morning, it's not there anymore. You're like, wait, what happened? Yeah. That has to be devastating. Or if, yeah. if especially if you're not um, used to that or expecting that that could happen to you. I would say, and, and, and the thing is uh, uh, to go along with what uh, Jen was saying, I think it's more of an investment. Yeah. Right. In, 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 because people are, I'm not very invested in a lot of this Facebook posts that I make, right? Like it's kind of, you know, oh, whatever, here's a, here's a link to this cool yeah. article or like, you know, this is, right. here's the dinner I made or something like that. Um, it's, it's, it's me trying to keep people, you know, uh, uh, connected. Uh, connected, right? And this is, this feels more invest, this has a higher stakes investment, I think, uh, because like it's, it's Wikipedia, right? Like this is where everybody goes for information, right? Like how many thousands of people might read this? And I mean, I have students who have written articles who uh, have gotten a thousand views a month for, you know, eight or 10 years now. Uh, They've been far more read than any academic right now. (laughs) That's amazing (laughs) to those students. Yeah. (laughs) And is that because they are focusing on potentially on their interests and generating content that might not otherwise have been there if they weren't the ones who produced it? Exactly. Uh, like I said, you know, when you have uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of the guys that, I, that I've met who have like active editors writing a ton of articles, you know, when you have a certain interest, you're going to be compelled to write that article right and if you don't bring the people who have disparate interests to the table teach them how to do it you know make us uh, make a space that is welcoming to uh people with disparate interests and different backgrounds and and, and whatnot uh you're not going to get the content that is diverse yeah and this is part of what um you know teaching wikipedia to people um can help with, right? It can help address that. Um, I think in the book, um, you and your co-author call it um, the homogeneity of Wikipedia's editorial demographic, right? So by by teaching it to new people, right, you're, we're opening up Wikipedia. You know, like to teaching it to students, we're opening it up to potentially new editors and mm-hmm. um new demographics um and all yeah go ahead yeah. i'm sorry go ahead yeah no it's just, absolutely yeah. yeah can you define Even if they only do that one thing homogeneity for us. <laughs> i can you can yeah it means everything um is of a type okay yeah did i do good i don't know 
<laughs> I'm just asking. Let's maybe ask. somebody's listening to this. Yeah. And they have no, no maybe, idea and never heard of that word before. No, I mean, I, I like that we can do the, the the extra layperson version and just say it's all the same. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, homogenous milk. Why? Because it's not lumpy. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> we want to. We want to. We want it not to just be homogenized milk, right? right? Like we want, we want lumps in our soup because like, that's, what's going to make an interesting soup. Um, you know, if it's just tomato bisque, then it's all one flavor and color. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, and, and I think that that's, here's the thing. A lot of students are not going to come back and edit for fun. They're just not. Um, but if we keep bringing them in, it's doing more, it's doing a lot of things at once. One, it's, it's, uh, shaping the uh, what is on Wikipedia and kind of, you know, combating that homogeneity by literally just having like, you know, one extra article that was written by uh, this person that, you know, is not, you know, a Wikipedia editor, right? <clears throat> and, but it's also, students are taking this experience with them, right? They are talking about it. Um, they are using Wikipedia in new ways now. Um they are able to interact with Wikipedia in new ways and uh, they might, you know, they're encouraging other people to interact with Wikipedia in new ways. So uh, no matter what, even if, uh, even if, you know, they're just doing this one little thing, one little edit, I think it still changes, uh, you know, it can still change the world bit by bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the more, the more people, right. We bring into the Wikipedia editor community, Right, we're going to close some of those knowledge gaps we were talking about before. Right, we're going to get new content put in there because we have new people and new perspectives and new interests. Mm-hmm. I solved it, Stomping Jim. Oh, you did? No, I read Zach's book. That's how I know <laughs> that. <laughs> so we'll just remind people: it's it's Wikipedia and the representation of reality. Um, th- I want you all to read this because it is fascinating stuff. And um, you organized your book around um, these principles that Wikipedia has. They call they call them the five pillars. Um, these sound like this sounds like a grand. I- these sound like grand ideas. These five pillars, and they are to some extent. Um, the first one we talked about a bit. I'm just going to mention it. It's Wikipedia is the encyclopedia. Right, mm-hmm. we talked about that. It hit that it has become that, mm-hmm. and just by the forces of the universe, that's what it is. Go ahead. But there's like other wikis out there, right? Wikipedia is like a very specific thing, and then there's like all these like if you're like super into something, there's there's, wo- there's wo- a wiki for that. There's Wikipedia for Star Wars fans. Wikipedia. There is there is a Wikipedia for Star Wars fans. Yes. Uh, but there are many wikis. Yeah. Um, Wikipedia is a different kind of uh, uh, a project. Um, so. Uh, can, can you define the difference between a wiki and. Like, what is so, a wiki? Uh, a wiki is any is basically a. a a document that anybody can kind of edit. Right. Okay. And it's a collaborative, it's a collaborative document. Right. Got it. Um, uh, there are other parts about wikis, which like, uh, you know, they should be connected. They're, they're linkable. They link to other things, but there's a lot of different types of uh, uh, wikis out there. Pe- you know, there's, there's wikis on all sorts of stuff on Wikia, like lots of fandom wikis, mm-hmm. uh, just like Wikipedia is Wikipedia is a fandom of, you know, uh, a, a Wookiee people, uh, Star Wars people. <laughs> yeah. um, so, but I, I do want to mention that, uh, so the first pillar of Wikipedia is Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. Oh. We say Wikipedia is the encyclopedia because we're trying to make a point here is that like when Wikipedia came out and it, it, it it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, one of its founding principles, you know, the pillars that kind of guide it, is Wikipedia is an encyclopedia it just means that, you know, uh, it's not 
uh, a bunch of other things, right? It's supposed to be an encyclopedia, right. which is a particular form of knowledge, right? It's a, it's a, a, a you know, logocentric, you know, there's a Western kind of history of, uh, of encyclopedia is, and, 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 you know, this kind of like whole enlightenment kind of history of it. Um, so it's, you know, not a soapbox at advertising platform or, or, or whatnot. But we argue that like, you know, in the last 20 years, like, it's pretty much, it's the encyclopedia. Now, it, it, you know, I grew up, I, you know, we, uh, we, we probably are like the last generation that might've had a copy of Encyclopedia Britannica laying. Oh yeah. I had one. Even, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. So, or, you know, or a world book encyclopedia or whatever the, the, the one that, you know, we, we had the, uh, the tier two version, if we, uh, if our parents couldn't afford it. And, um, but, uh, these really don't exist anymore. Right. Um, and so when you say encyclopedia, students will be like, is that like Wikipedia? Right. right. So it's, it's, it's like, so they have no reference, now. right. They have no reference point, right. The, huh. the reference that Wikipedia is based off of no longer exists and the Wikipedia, uh, it persists. It's like when right? you say, I'm going to tape this thing, <laughs> but there's yeah. no tape involved any longer. <laughs> right. They look at you and say, what do you What mean? are you talking about? Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, you know, like the, the joke where uh, um, somebody said, uh, oh, look, this, uh, look at this, you know, floppy disk. It's like, <laughs> oh, it's just like this icon or something like that. Right. Right. But like students don't even, apparently there was a new thing recently. The student, you know, like young people don't even know what an icon or a file or a folder is anymore. Like, it's like, I, I don't fully trust that, but like, I can imagine that we're, we're constantly rearranging our associations, Mm -hmm. right. Of Mm -hmm. how we interact with kind of technology. And let's be honest, like, I mean, writing is a technology, printing is a technology. So, you know, there's technology involved in the uh, print encyclopedias that we have. So we're reorienting our associations of this kind of form of encyclopedia. And now it is the encyclopedia that, 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 you know, people who were born in the last 20 years know. Mm -hmm especially and and maybe you know more right uh we 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 think about these other things like encyclopedia britannica but like it that's not i haven't looked at encyclopedia britannica in a very long time who needs to it's in your pocket what's going to happen when we have neural implants oh stop it i can't stop it oh my Um, god I do want to hurting my head. All right, sorry. I told you this was going to be this was going to be intense. Are you okay? I'm totally fine. Do you need a hug? Stop. Okay. Um, so, uh, all right. There's another pillar. I want to just I want to review these pillars because I find them interesting. Right. Um, one is Wikipedia is written from a neutral point of view. You talk about this a lot in the book, and it informs a lot of what's in there. Um, talk to us a little bit about what this means. This idea of neutrality. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I've I've actually I, I've had uh, I've come up to a lot of uh, misunderstanding about like what neutrality means in in uh, in 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 various circles because for Wikipedia neutrality is about representation of information in a way that is neutral as in um, trying not to give it both um, you know kind of advertising speak right like in in the form of the the language but also neutral in the representation of what's out there right so what uh what's nice about that and and you know of course wikipedia suffers from this kind of um uh of a systemic biases uh which we'll probably talk about at some point but uh of of that because it's tertiary it relies on secondary sources which means some things that are out there are just not covered well enough for Wikipedia to find them, you know, to be included, right? So, but at the same time, it tries to make sure that all the topics that are in an article don't suffer from undue weight. And the example I want to give here is like, uh, you know, like when you see uh, like the talking heads on um, you know, MSNBC or Fox News or something like that. And they're trying to give like the same airtime to people with like conspiracy theories as right. they do scientists. And Wikipedia doesn't allow that. Uh, it is uh, because it should give the 
topic, neutral coverage means that it, it should be representative of what's out there that's published in reliable sources. So an article about climate change, if 999 scientists say climate change is made up, uh, is, is man-made, and one says it's not, 999 out of 100, uh, out of uh, out of 1,000, you know, uh, uh, you know, like what, 0.1% point, point of the article can reference this, this, you know, outside idea. It yeah. can be referenced, it can be talked about, but it's not like we're going to like, be like, well, let's, let's give both sides a chance. It's saying, no, that's not actually how it works. Most people agree and have consensus about X. And then there are some minority opinions and it, relegates those to that space that's what neutrality really means is is this i'm assuming this was an early idea from the people who started wikipedia and whoever um monitors the ongoing policies and rules i mean are are they 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 must be acutely aware of the risk of misinformation in the political landscape around them Right. And is that something that they think about in an active way? Absolutely. Um, uh, you know, some editors refer to, uh, you know, the stuff coming in to Wikipedia is like the fire hose of misinformation. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just like a bunch of garbage that can get, which is one of the reasons why they really stick to their guns on this. And again, is it perfect? No. Uh, you know, there's plenty of things and, and you know, we cover a lot of issues uh, it, it, that Wikipedia uh, suffers from, some which are, uh, you know, being worked on and some that uh, are inherent to the kind of the, the system itself. And uh, so in, in, in that way, like I've always, you know, I like to say like I'm ambivalent about Wikipedia, but like I am celebratory because I love it so much, but I'm, I never want to say like, oh, it's perfect. Like it has lots of issues, yeah. but like, just because like, you know, a person has some issues doesn't mean you can't love them. It means you like, you know, want to help them through the issues, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, but like when you have to focus on utilizing uh, verifiable, reliable, authoritative sources, um, you end up, uh, you end up obviously like missing out on some things like things that aren't written down for one, you know, but when you open it up to everything, then you end up with, uh, the ability, it's much more difficult to kind of like filter out the noise. Right. Um, and then you end up with a lot of opinions and a lot of arguments about what should and shouldn't. So they have to have hard rules about sec about being encyclopedia, which means it's a tertiary source, which means it has to rely on things that are already published. Yeah. That's so interesting. It, in my way, in my way, it feels, and I'm not trying to idealize Wikipedia, um, like one of the, and again, um, Zach and um, is it Matthew Vetter, your co-author? Yeah, Matt. Matt. His, Matt. I mean, just like uh, uh, the the book is uh, uh, by Zachary McDowell and Matthew Vetter. Uh, it's a uh, we. That's that's our we have our academic names. Where yeah. our podcast name is Zach. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, and, and you. I mean, you both. While I while I am probably idealizing Wikipedia and saying. You know, it, it it might be a port in the a port of calm in the storm of misinformation out there. You and you and Matt are very open about the limitations and challenges of Wikipedia, and and the book was it was fascinating to read from that perspective, right? And we'll, I'm going to talk about some of those in a little bit with Zach, but I just want to say, like, I really enjoyed reading. Like, I love. I love reading, like you said, I love um, knowing about the imperfections of people too, right? Because that's what makes us human, right? And, and Wikipedia right. is is this um, amazing thing trying to accomplish like this incredibly lofty goal, right? And it, But it has challenges too anyways. I just want to acknowledge those. Um, um, all right. The third pillar is openness as an ethic and an ideology, yeah. What, so <clears throat> yeah, help us uh, here. The, 
Yeah, so the third pillar is Wikipedia is free content that anyone can use. Uh, use, edit, and distribute. So that's the official title of the third pillar. But what I mean is openness is an ideology is that when they say free, they don't just mean free as in like have some free stuff. They mean free as in freedom, right? They mean like take this and do with what as you want. Like go, if you want to print this out and sell it, go for it. Mm -hmm. If you want to, you know, import it into your, you know, whatever database, like you can use it in ways, not just have it. I didn't know that. To to read. Yeah. So it it utilizes a a creative commons um, share alike license, which means that if you utilize stuff from Wikipedia, you have to like, make sure that like, you're not going to take it and then copyright that information. Right. You can't you have to distribute it under the same um, uh, uh, license, but it doesn't have a, 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 a non-commercial license. So you can go do things with it if you want. Um, but it means that it's at its core. It is about openness, like this idea that information should be collected and shared for free with everyone is is really a core uh, concept and a core kind of like you know, driving force of Wikipedia. So it, it, it definitely shapes what people do and how people interact with it and how people feel about it, um, especially the editors and, and those, you know, who are involved with it. So it's, I, I, I want to, like, when we use the term ideology, you know, like, uh, uh, we, we don't want to get like, you know, too academic on it, but like, I, I mean, it is this idea that is a, a driving force that is, that you don't even think about. It's like right. part of that core, like, you know, sense of, of, of what it is. Yeah. That's so interesting. Like people, I mean, people have asked us, why don't we monetize our podcast? Right. Why aren't we interested in that? And I feel like we, um, we're the Wikipedia of podcasts <laughs> stomping Jen. <laughs> we, we believe in openness. We do. And we just, we want to put, information out to That's people right. and make we it available share the knowledge right just like wikipedia all right <laughs> um, i think we should rename our podcast the wikipedia <laughs> podcast no i mean you know uh yeah. wikipedia does ask for five dollar donations quite a bit so yeah. oh uh, no listen all of you scoundrels out there myself included donate to wikipedia yeah because i use this thing about 10 times a day mm-hmm. right so you know um i i I mean, hey, I've been working with uh, with Wikipedia. I teach with Wikipedia. I've done work with the foundation, uh, lots of different kind of stuff. And I still give give ten dollars a month to them because, you know, in the end, uh, it's supporting one of the most important and radical uh, things out there. Uh, and and I do that because I can afford that and other people can't. Yeah, we don't want to lose this thing. Right. Are you going to start donating? We should. Can Only we get a soft serve podcast entry into Wikipedia? Well, you get on it. I'm not. Be bold, <laughs> Stomping Jen. Be bold. I don't know. That, that sounds that sounds like a conflict of interest. I think you should find somebody else to re- write that's it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Can we pay them to write it? No. All right. Um, okay. I want to talk the community. This is incredibly important. And the idea of community and communities um, is the fourth pillar, right? Yeah. What is there anything particular we need to know about this? Is this has, in terms of a pillar, a pillar is something that, you know, holds up and supports something else. Is, is, is Wikipedia doing right by its aspirations to, um, be a community, value communities? Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is a thing that is really funny. I actually had an interesting conversation with a, a, a fellow Wikipedian who, who go, joked that there's actually a, um, uh, like a, a debate on Wikipedia on the Wikipedia article about the Wikipedia community, about whether or not there should be an article about the Wikipedia community on Ooh, Wikipedia. And I'm like, that's very that is the most, yeah, that's the, the most Wikipedian <laughs> thing I've ever seen. Um, but the, uh, the fourth pillar is called, is is Wikipedia's editors should treat each other with respect and civility. Okay. And really that just comes down to like, you got to like treat each other as human beings because Wikipedia is a community. Now, 
Wikipedia is both an encyclopedia, so it's this amazing, massive project that's supported by this foundation, whatever. But the community is the are the ones that run it. So it's it's both a community as well as a project. And there's not a lot of a lot of things out there, um, you know, that that can share that kind of space. Uh, there is a um, there's a guy uh, uh, years ago who did this uh, neat little kind of ignite talk. Um, and he, he ta- it was, uh, I forget the name, but it was, um, it's called uh, why Wikipedians are the weirdest pe- people on the internet. And, and one of the points was like, Hey, look, you know, everyone likes to like do kind of like social media and stuff like that. But like nobody on Facebook or Twitter thinks that they're like going to change the world with free knowledge. Right. Uh, whereas right. like Wikipedians are like, there is, there is a, a, a joining principle right up there. And, and that's not saying that there aren't communities that, that, you know, there are great advocacy communities that are great things, but this is a very specific kind of thing. And um, so really that pillar comes down to like, you got to be nice to each other and like recognize that we're all human. Um, and, and it is often one of those things that, uh, uh, that really comes back because uh, you know, it's, it's this, this pillar, like, says you should like be welcoming to newcomers and things like that but as as we've already talked about like it is very often that it is tough for a new person to navigate wikipedia because it's so well uh established that it's a very it is very very high bar to be able to kind of uh, participate and editors are often very overwhelmed because they're they're volunteers uh, so, you know, some of them can act badly at times and some of them can be frustrated at times and they're human. You know, some of them should stop editing Wikipedia if they're not going to be nice. Right. And there have been those cases where we, people have been uh, what they call global banned because they're let's just say they're they're assholes. Um, some of them. Uh, uh, and 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 uh, so c- the community has kicked people out because they weren't nice enough. Right. Yeah. Uh but but it's it's it it's a reminder that this is this is really about the community that builds it and it relies on that community and building that community is priority one if you're going to have a successful future for wikipedia yeah and and what's interesting to me is the fifth pillar um in or the fifth part of your book that talks about Wikipedia is that Wikipedia has no firm rules, right? This idea that there are no set rules. How, I mean, how can they, how can they maintain the functioning and peaceability of these communities without rules? There are rules, right? There, are, but th- th- there so, must be a nuance in here somewhere. Right. So there are policies and there are guidelines. Okay. Right? And, and here's the thing, what, what the, the operative word here is firm. And that means that everything can be changed. Oh, okay. uh, so it's not there. Um, you know, I would say that a lot of the r- rules are relatively firm as, as, as they stand now, but that doesn't mean, even if they're set in stone, it doesn't mean that people can't come and chip away and change the stone. Right. Um, you know, castles fall down eventually, too. Uh, you got to you got to you got to do maintenance. Um, so uh, it really comes down to that. All these things are consensus by the community. So and which is weird because it's not the kind of consensus of like you get everybody in the room. It's that there's a, an interesting kind of like debate. Uh, where the community kind of comes to a general consensus through airing their opinions. And eventually they reach uh, some level of consensus. And it let's just say it's messy, uh, <laughs> often. And, and, and it does evolve over time. Um, and there are things that are evolving, you know, quite often around policies in Wikipedia, because not only... Uh, do they realize things need to be reworded, but also they recognize that to uphold the mission of Wikipedia, things need to change sometimes, especially when it comes to being more welcoming to, you know, new community members and how to kind of set their sights on improving Wikipedia. And these, these policies, these guidelines, these other um, organizational structures, they're, they're available for all of us to look at and see and engage with right there. And you talk about this in your book. They're in um, 
these other areas of Wikipedia called namespaces, right? You can go and find all of this stuff if you're interested in seeing what those rules are or those, um, those guidelines and policies and other things. Um, right. Uh, so Wikipedia has a lot of pages in, um, and namespaces are really kind of like, uh, there are user pages, uh, talk pages about Wikipedia, like templates. There's a lot of different kind of stuff that isn't specifically an encyclopedia page. And there are enormous amounts of namespaces. Um, uh, there are, um, there are policy pages for all sorts of things. There are policy, there are guidelines about every single little thing there that, that are huge, like pages and pages long um, that have developed over time because of like all the little things that have come up and, you know, the people realize, I mean, there's a, one of my favorites is, uh, is called uh, don't put beans in your nose. <laughs> and uh, the Wikipedia pay, uh, names, the, 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 the guy, the, there's, what do they call it? Uh, it's the, um, uh, it's just called like, yeah, uh, Wikipedia beans. Uh, Wikipedia beans. Uh, Zach is Zach is looking this I'm, up for I'm, us. I'm looking this up on, um, but yeah, it's don't stuff beans up your nose. And um, it is basically saying uh, one of the things that they, they say is like, um, don't give people ideas of bad things to do. So like sometimes <laughs> they don't name, they don't name all the things you shouldn't do. Because if you keep saying it out loud, they'll do right. it, which is the don't. So never tell a kid, don't put beans up your nose. Oh, my God. Yeah. Kids listening to this. It's one of one of the reasons Just I don't. Just go put the beans in your nose. <laughs> it's one of one of the reasons we don't tell the kids our stories from our childhood. Oh, my God. They leak yeah. out anyway. They do leak out. They leak right. out. What do we do? You can't put it back. You can't yeah. go back, Bob. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So th there's a lot of, you know, my, my point is there's a lot of these like essays that are about that people reference in kind of talk pages and guidelines of like, you know, all sorts of stuff. And there's just hundreds and there's thousands of them. Right. And, and they're, they are very much openly accessible to everyone. Like I just, I, I forgot where it was. So I literally just Googled Wikipedia beans nose and I got like the third one down. It was, Oh, that that's the essay I'm looking for. Um, but most people don't even know these things exist. I was going to say in my mind, I'm thinking of Wikipedia as this like castle. Right. And like, I've only walked into the, the entryway. Right in my own experience, like there's all this other stuff there's to an explore. Attic, there's a dungeon. Yeah. Like you could, you could literally get there's lost. There's the back alley room. You could get lost for days wandering around inside That's of it. That's like your, your, your dream I know. mansion. It would have to be Gothic though. Oh, I saw Wait, some, I, can I just mention this? Sorry. This is a wicked unrelated aside. I was looking at the, um, the um, Satanic Temples yeah. uh, webpage in Salem. Uh -huh. They have some wallpaper, some Gothic style oh, wallpaper. I I researched this for over an hour and located the vendor. Oh my god! And this I'm gonna, is what he does. With I'm gonna time. I'm gonna buy it. In dark. I'm gonna wallpaper this entire space. No, 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 no. Yes, not my green. All right, room. sorry. It's a completely not. That's a non sequitur. Anyways, um, somehow this probably involved Wikipedia in my searching. Somehow, I, I guarantee it did. Um, so the castle, right? Wikipedia is this giant castle. You could spend days wandering around inside of it, I think. I mean, imagine it's also kind of like the, the Louvre, right? Uh, or any art, giant art museum. Like a, a, we've got the um, Art Institute here, which I've been to so many times, I'm still finding new stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and But behind the scenes, they have so many more. And also they have policies on how to handle art, how to do this, right? Like they have people who are curating people who work. There's all this stuff that's behind the scenes, all this storage, all this other things, but you don't see it as the person who like is just wandering around looking yeah. at art. Yeah, for sure. That's like Disney world. Oh yeah. I mean, they got tunnels in Disney world. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same concept.
But a lot of the stuff we can see if we're interested, right? We, yes. The, right. the, the doors exactly. are unlocked. The doors the are doors unlocked. The doors are totally unlocked. We the doors have... are actually open. Yep. There are literally signs that people just aren't paying attention to. Yeah. Um, every single page, for example, uh, when I talk to students about Wikipedia, most of them have never gone to a talk page. It's literally right there. I don't think it's I've ever gone right to it. No, I don't even know what you're right, talking about. Yeah. It's at the, so it's at the top. Uh, on the left, kind of on the left-hand side, on the top of the page, uh, for any Wikipedia article, um, there will be, you know, the page, and then right next to it is a little tab that says talk. And click on it. To- and just click on it. And yeah. you will literally see the conversations that the community has had around this particular article. That's fascinating. I need to click on it. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm going to check this out. I feel like there's so much to explore here in Wikipedia. Well, welcome to new Wikipedia. Yeah. Like wiki, wiki holes. Um, okay. Um, so we talked about some of the issues Wikipedia is dealing with. We, we talked about trying to get um, a more diverse... Um, Accessible, inclusive. Editor group and include them. Um, Inclusivity. And we talked, yeah, we talked about how that... That might begin to address the gaps in content representation. Um, um, now, this one was interesting, and I think this is related. I was I was looking in, in your book, Zach, and you talk about um, one of the issues that Wikipedia is dealing with is, I'm going to just read here, limitations on how Wikipedia builds its knowledge base and its resistance to looking beyond print-centric in Western conceptions of knowledge-making to work with alternative traditions. This was interesting to me. So I took that to mean that there are lots of um, uh, other ways of, of storing and communicating knowledge that are not necessarily in writing or ways that we traditionally represent those things in Western culture. So um, you mentioned in the book, oral traditions, um, and there's not a place in Wikipedia for that stuff or is there? No, uh, there have been a few uh, kind of little uh, projects to, to, to help with that recognition. Um, and, but this is, this is a tricky thing. Like I said, you know, um, when you've built your uh, project around, uh, ter- uh, you know, being a tertiary knowledge source, it means that you are collecting secondary sources, right? And, and you know, for your, for your I, I, because I get a lot of students who like get confused about this, I'll like explain that to your listeners as well. Uh, when primary sources, we're thinking about like data. Right. Like data that we you know, collect and then the interpretation of that would be secondary sources. So any kind of even if a journalistic source is like that's the thing that was written, you know, that's considered a secondary source because there's yeah. a thing that happened, which is a primary thing where the data that's collected around that. And then there's a secondary thing, which is the reporting of that. that so a peer reading. A, like a peer reviewed article is a secondary source. Yes. Oh, OK. It often it often is. Um, okay. Now, some, I mean, there's a difference in, in some, like, uh, you know, there, there's some, uh, uh, you know, publications of data and things like that in, in some uh, other, um, other uh, 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 disciplines out, way outside of mine uh, that, that could be considered primary, right? And uh, especially in the, in the uh, physical sciences. But what I mean is anytime you have this thing that is like published by a reputable publisher, yep. right. Whether it's the New York times or it's, you know, a, an academic journal. Um, if it's, you know, readable by the average person, the idea is to take that, you know, summarize points, uh, uh, information out of that in Wikipedia and then point to, you know, that as a citation. But when you do that, that means that, you are always succumbing to the biases of uh, of that who gets to publish, right? Yeah, and where it's published, and who so who's making those decisions, and of course, like this is if it's all the world's knowledge for all time, this goes back forever. 
right? Right. Uh, so what information has been, you know, uh, collected, what, who gets covered? And, and this is um, the, the former, uh, uh, you know, CEO uh, of, of a, uh, no, the former executive director of, of Wikimedia Foundation, uh, you know, responded to some of these kind of issues that have come up saying, look, Wikipedia is uh, a reflection of the world's biases in a way. Right. Yeah. And, and, and so, and, and I don't want to let necessarily just give it a pass on that, but I do want to, like, as I say, like, it's easy to shoot fish in a barrel and be like, Hey, look, you know, uh, this is biased because it was a bunch of white guys who wrote it and they didn't have a clue, but, but let's also contextualize that. Right. Um, it is very difficult to kind of navigate that while saying, we want to let some knowledge in, but we don't want to let others in because it's not, you know, quote unquote knowledge. Right. And they use this term verifiability instead of this term truth. Yeah. Right. Reliability and verifiability. They don't use the term truth because, you know, there are a lot of quote unquote truths. Right. And, and that's not to say like everyone, every, they're all true, but there are, you know, various kind of, perspectives and uh, of information and to balance that in a neutral way means you have to rely on, uh, on these kind of other sources that, uh, and that there's plenty of, of, of documented evidence about um, information bias, uh, gender bias in, in, in coverage, you know, uh, I was. I actually worked on a, a an article one time, specifically about a a, a woman who um, uh, was a author of, of board games, and the New York Times continuously covered her counterparts who were male, who had done just as much, you know, mm -hmm. uh, work, and just as many, you know, uh, it's we're, we're talking apples to apples here, but they would cover an interview this this male counterpart and not the woman right and that means that when the biography of the man was out to be written there's plenty of stuff to to go on but the biography of the woman there was not a bunch of uh stuff from reliable secondary sources right so so it isn't necessarily wikipedia's fault this is a systemic issue this is a larger issue but what i what what i think is interesting about Wikipedia is it helps shine a light on that because yeah. it's obvious that it's missing. Right. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is a larger issue that we can't just fix by saying, well, let's just let it all in. Right. We're not going to let all the floodgates open, but we need to start making, uh, understanding those biases and understanding how to work with them. And so that we can cover, uh, you know, we can actually represent the world's knowledge because the world's knowledge is not, you know, all a bunch of white guys in yep. in <laughs> and, and, and wikipedia it recognizes this right and it, it acknowledges this and it's struggling with this right like how to move forward with this Absolutely. yeah and i think that's what's so important least, i would say a lot of the community yeah. does and the foundation definitely does yeah um so uh you know when i say when when we use the term Wikipedia, like, you know, are we referring to the uh, non-sentient, you know, right. mm -hmm. uh, uh, thing, or are we talking about the people who run the foundation or the community? And I would say we could say that the foundation can be considered somewhat of a monolith because it, it, it does have, you know, a, a, a structure yeah. of, a, 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 of people who run it. But the community is very large and disparate. Right. Uh, but I would say that there there are excellent programs and excellent uh, movement, sub movements within the when people often refer to themselves as the Wikipedia movement. Um, but there's lots of different kind of uh, areas in which they're working on this from a variety of different angles, because there's no one solution. Yeah. And I, and I love um, I want to begin to kind of drive us um drive us towards the end of our, our, our conversation about, um, about Wikipedia and the representation of reality. And I love it. Towards the end of the book, you have this, <clears throat> you have this passage, um, and I don't know who wrote it, so I'll, I'll just say it's, it's 
your work and and Matthew Vetter's work. <laughs> so I want to read this because um, I think it sums up a lot of what you're saying really nicely. And I, I pulled it out of here because it really resonated with me. So I'm going to read it. Um, okay. It says, um, and you're talking about, um, it is clear we need a new kind of boldness. So I'm going to read here. One that is not merely an assumption of agency, but an act of construction and inclusion. An invitation, not only for Wikipedia, but for all knowledge production systems. It is not enough to be passively inclusive. But if Wikipedia is to remain entrusted with its grand task, it must actively include the sum of all human knowledge, and with it, a plethora of representatives for the representation of reality. I love it. (laughs) I mean, that's what you just said to us. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I, I, so that, I mean, I, I appreciate that you pulling that out because that, that is, that's exactly kind of a lot of the point is that, um, and like I said, a lot of this, so a lot of this work has come from years of teaching and years of research, which Bat and I write about in the, uh, in the preface. Um, but these are kind of things that him and I have been like linking up and talking about and, and I, 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 we've written articles about and, and we wanted to kind of really, like really come down to, and we, we, we've been talking about like that, like I said, uh, uh, you know, these guys who like set this ideas up, they wanted to throw a great party for, and invite everybody. Right. But there's, it's the experience of being someone who's always welcome in a space, you know, as being a, 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 a person of, of, of that type of privilege in my, in the world, in America, in this current state uh, of being, uh, you know, a, 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 a relatively tall white guy. Um, I'm, I never feel not welcome in most spaces, right? Like yeah. most places I navigate, I feel, I don't. So that drives the way in which I interact with my environment. And that's why I'm, uh, we say, like, it's not enough to just say, come on in. It's that you have to make this space actively inclusive, not yeah. just passively open up the door and say, well, you can come if you want to. And then you walk in and then it's like, no one looks like you. It doesn't feel like you, you feel totally not dressed right. Like, you know, like right. uh, you're made to feel like you're not welcome here in many, many ways. Yeah. Some are passive, some are active. But we need to uh, turn to this actively inclusive in in a variety of ways, right? And and a lot of that just comes with respecting people, right? It's mm-hmm. I know it sounds like simple, but like, hey, ask people what makes them feel comfortable, right? Like, yeah. you know, if you throw a party and you have a friend who's a vegetarian and it's all meat, you've told them in other ways that like they're not actually welcome here. Right. That's right. Uh, as a person who throws a lot of barbecues, you know, and has a lot of meat at the barbecue, I always make sure that like the vegetarians know they're welcome by not only telling them, but also saying, hey, I made all there's this vegetarian dish or I have this space on the grill for your veggie burgers or whatnot. You know, uh, you have to reach out and say, how can I make this space better for you? How can we build a space together? Not just you know, open up the doors and be like, whatever, I threw a party and everybody was invited. Right. Uh, Yeah. Uh, I love that. Um, I want to mention your book. I got it for free. Um, You sent me the, yep. You sent me the link. Um, I went on, I went on to this website and I'm, I have the link in the show notes. Okay. So if you're listening to this, um, you can go uh, click on the show notes and I'll have all of the links to um, Zach's different web, presences there, right? So you can go mm-hmm. check out what he's up to. But um, you, you can get this book. Um, you have it available um, uh, under an open access Creative Commons uh, license. Um, yes. So anything you want to say about that? Yeah. So, I mean, there's one thing, uh, you know, as you said earlier, like openness is an ethic and an ideology. Uh, I definitely, uh, I, I identify there. Right. You know, it's it's been part of my work uh, for a long time is to look at openness 
you know, look at access. And I think one of the reasons for this book was to kind of like peel back the layers of this kind of like assumption of like, it's the, it's, you know, anyone can edit and, you know, it's the sum of all the world's knowledge. And they're like, okay, cool. It's actually, no, you know what? Wikipedia is awesome. And let me tell you all the reasons it's awesome, but also let me tell you why none of this is actually quite true and why not everyone really can edit because not everybody is, feels invited or, you know, but also the idea of access is complicated. But if I'm going to write about these things, I also feel like I have to be true to it because I do believe in access. I do believe in um, in openness. And the first step in that is making sure people can get it. And as an academic book, you know, first of all, like uh, I'm you know, I'm, I'm trying to not, we were trying very hard to not make it like super academies, uh, but it is from an academic publisher and, uh, and making sure that it had an open access license was really, really important. Uh, so we spent a lot of time and a fair amount of money um, procuring this through a variety of grants and, and, and funding uh, because uh, we had to basically buy the license mm-hmm. um, from the publisher uh, because, you know, they're doing the work of publishing it, of the editorial, like all these different things, but like, we're like, it needs to be open access. And they're like, well, you know, they need to pay their editors you're and right. things like mm-hmm. that as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it's a negotiation and it, and it's something that not, uh, I talked to a person who is a, a, a fantastic uh, Wikipedia author, um, you know, a great researcher and stuff like that. And they were very jealous. They're like, I just didn't have the money to make it work. And I, and I'm like really jealous because I know how hard it is. So I was like, yeah, we, we, we put a lot of effort and time and, and, uh, and fundraising um, into making this something that you don't need to go and buy that you can download on, on the, off the internet in perfect PDF form. You can send it to your friends. You can print it out. You can do whatever the heck you want with it. Yeah. Uh, and you could send, so folks, you can send it. If you have a Kindle, I sent it to my Kindle. There's a way to do that. Um, so you could take the PDF, shoot it to your Kindle and it will convert it into a Kindle format for you. Um, you can do that too. You. I know. Navigating technology. And do you know how I And you're a dinosaur to boot. I don't even understand. (laughs) Yeah. uh, No, thank you for doing that. And I I really appreciate hearing the explanation of how much work went into being able to make it for free. Because I had no idea that you had to, like, secure the grants and and make sure that um, you had to buy that license. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that a lot of people don't see – you know, we, we live in a world where if something doesn't have a price, they often, um, discount it, devalue it. Right. Um, but especially, you know, if you go to the, I I believe the book is $60, uh, you know, if you want to buy it, cause it's only available right now in hardcover. It just came out like a couple of weeks ago. I believe that the, the copyright on the book is actually 2022. Oh wow! (laughs) Uh, So like, that's how fresh this book is. Um, uh, so, you know, it's an academic book uh, uh, and, and academic books are often very expensive, especially when they come out brand new in their hardcovers because um, uh, they're lower. Uh, they, they print less copies of them. You know, right. mm-hmm. um, there's a whole ec- economy around that. But we wanted to make sure that uh, it wasn't just going to libraries, right? Uh, academic libraries and collections. It wasn't it was actually, um, you know, folks like yourselves could access it because like really this really is about uh, like, we want to put our money where our mouth is. Like, you know, we're saying like things should change, like, and, and not only your perspectives around Wikipedia, but also the way you interact with it and maybe even participate. And, and you know, how am I going to say that to people if like the, the book is $60 or hiding behind a firewall or something like that. Like I want you to read it. Like that's the 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 most important thing is to get the book is to get the information out. Yeah. And it's, I just, I want to reiterate, you know, I spent the last week, you know, kind of going through and reading sections of the book and it, and I hope people can tell from this conversation, it really opened my eyes to um, Wikipedia and what this, this resource is that we all kind of take for granted on a day-to-day basis, you know, like Mm -hmm. I, you know, it, it really, it really is worth, um, 
your time and attention to take a look at um at, at Zach and Matthew um, Vetter's book here. It's it's something else. I just wanted to ask you real quick, what's it like to write a book like this with another person? Is that is that um I I, I imagine it might be trying at times. It's probably ultimately rewarding, but. Uh, yeah, you know what? I will say this. Uh, Matt and I have been writing together for a while. We've got a few different things on and we have a groove. Uh, and I would say it did not come out of nowhere. Like it was a struggle. Like I realized where, how we kind of come together on things. And one of the ways that I, I, th- I think out loud, right? Mm-hmm. Like I talk, I talk out ideas and some of my favorite things about like, you know, for example, grad school, it's just like batting ideas and like, and like ideas come out of these conversations. And so Matt and I just end up like chatting about stuff. And eventually one of us will start taking down notes on or like, well, like, well, what about this? And I'm like, oh, and then I'll go on a, like a, a, a yarn on something. And he'll be like, well, I just took a bunch of notes on this. And I think you're right on this, this, and this, and maybe we should rephrase this and this. And then we get, went back and forth. Um, so it was really cool. And, and we wrote it over the pandemic. So it was actually nice that like, we would set aside like, you know, Tuesday and Thursday mornings for like an hour or two to just sit on zoom. And like, sometimes I would just like ask him how his family is doing. And like, yeah. you know, we just tr- drink coffee and catch up and, you know, uh, make assignments for each other. Um, so I will say like, I'm incredibly lucky to have such a great friend and collaborator as, as Matt. Um, you know, I, I, he's a fantastic academic, uh, a really good human being and, and a, a great Wikipedia. Um, it is not the easy. I've tried to write things with other people and it does not always work out so well. Um, Matt and I have the very different voices, which is why, it was the hardest thing I think is we spent a lot of time trying to give it more of a homogeneity. (laughs) Um, and and because that's important for the flow of a book. Right. Yeah. And, and then because, uh, uh, and then we would continue to go back to other chapters to make sure that we're, we're developing that together. Right. Cause it's not like I wrote a chapter and then Matt wrote. So like I wrote a chapter and Matt wrote a chapter and then I would go and edit Matt's chapter and vice versa. And then we would write chapters literally together. So it was a whole mishmash. It was not a, it was a very kind of organic process. Yeah, um, I think you did a great job because I, I, I uh, recollecting my experience reading it, I, I have a hard time uh, discerning separate voice. voices. Yeah. yeah. There, there was, there's literally like a, only a few sentences that, because I know, yeah. I remember like reading like one word. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's one of Matt's words. I never <laughs> use that word in my writing. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but the other thing is like, we also, uh, when we got the contract for this, um, we specifically were trying to uh, get a much shorter book. The book had to be under 50,000 words total, which uh, was one of the reasons we were trying to fit a lot in there, but we wanted to make it accessible, both in time that it takes to read it, right? Like it's yeah. maybe 146 pages long, um, but also uh, it should have deep, you know, hopefully like we've engaged on some pretty deep ideas here, but, you know, and you can tell me as, as, as you are admittedly non, non-academic, uh, did it, was it, uh, you is know, it I, 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 yeah, is it readable to you? Yeah, a- absolutely. There are a few words I had to look up. I'll was confess. It homogeneity? <laughs> I, no, <laughs> it was epistemology. Um, I, and I went through grad school mm-hmm. and, you know, I had to go and look that word up, but, um, it, it, it was, it, it was readable. Um, it was, it was relevant to me because I use Wikipedia all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, who doesn't? Yeah, right. And, and it was it it was very interesting. Again, I like I'm I'm the type who once I begin peeling away at the onion, I just keep going. I want to see what's inside, and um, I loved. I still, you know, at 47, still love to learn stuff. Right. And it's like one of the reasons why I took on this podcasting project three years ago is I want to learn how to do it because I love podcasting. Mm-hmm. Here we are three years later, stomping Jen. And um, I was just, once I started reading, I was like, oh my God, there's all this stuff about this thing I use all the time I didn't know. And mm-hmm. I just wanted to keep going and kind of understand it. So, yeah, I think, I think, I think. I think you and um, 
um, Matthew Vetter have done an amazing thing here. And I, I really hope people read this book. Um, it's, it's super interesting. Um, well, I appreciate it. That yeah. I'm, 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 I'm glad it seems like we hit the mark they were hoping for. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to ask you our last two questions. Um, okay. Zach, um, and th- these are real softballs, so don't worry, except the last one. The, the last <sighs> one gives people the panic question. attacks. Okay. Nobody has a panic attack. Stop scaring. All right. All right. Um, uh, what do you like to do when you're not working? So when you're not when you're not Wikipedia. investigating, when you're not being a um, a Wikipedian, when you're not investigating Wikipedia, when you're not teaching, what's the stuff you like to do to to reconnect with Zach and just you know be at be at peace with yourself? Well, <clears throat> I have a couple of things, but I will say that the two things that I love more than anything else are uh, gardening and cooking. And, um, I've cooking in particular is that's been my meditation. I will, I will attest to this. I, I, so Zach and I are are connected on social media and you should see the the pictures of food that he posts that he makes. (laughs) Amazing. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you cook with the things you garden? Yes. Um, uh, I, I cook, uh, we just, I just canned a bunch of tomatoes. I had 15 different tomato plants this year. Um, I've got, uh, I've got all sorts of different stuff. I, I, I discovered the, the gardening has been more recent, um, in my, especially in the pandemic. I like, I really kind of, I would say settled in, you know, to, to, I made my house a home, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in 2019, I think I spent two months out of the country, uh, just giving talks all over the place. And, uh, it was a lot, it was just a lot. I was born out, but like, I really kind of like, I really came and I, I love seeing that like every day having that kind of like rhythm and, uh, and especially cooking. Cause I, I love, and this is the tough thing about the pandemic is I love cooking for people. Yeah. And, um, and luckily I went through, uh, with a, uh, a, 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 uh, what do we call them? A pod, our pod people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I had a very yeah. good friend that we would, we would, you know, watch movies and cook dinner a lot together. And we have a very deep connection around that. So nice. it was a, uh, it's something that really gives me joy. Nice. That's awesome. Um, all right. La- and thank you for sharing that with us. Um, all right. Last question. Um, I'm just going to ask it, Stomping Jen. Oh I always God, get nervous. You make like a whole buildup. I get, ask the question. I'm a, ask the question. I'm Are you going to give me a panic attack? Right. Just like, oh my right. God, just <laughs> ask it. What have you experienced that you cannot explain? Ooh. Oh. Um, will, will mystical music help? Oh I can add God. some of that. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to add a little for you. Okay. Set the mood. I, I, I would say that... Um, there are a lot of things that are uh, unexplained. And when I think about unexplained, I just like to think about things that I don't yet understand. Yeah. And, um, you know, there is, I'm going to go back to another, that kind of feeling of cooking, but this similar feeling of meditation. And, and it's when I stare out over a large body of water, yeah. um, I get this feeling Um and it's the hippiest thing I'm ever going to say, but there's this, <laughs> it's, it's this like connection and, and at the same end and, and, but deep fear as well. Yeah. Right. Of, of the smallness. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's really answers your question. Cause I, I don't really have any like supernatural experiences yeah. that I could, that I, but I would call that supernatural. Yeah. Right? There's because no, that, the, yeah. That, th- there's no right or wrong here. Yeah. yeah but the, I, 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 I love feeling small. Yeah. The odd uh, and awe of the universe. Yeah, exactly. To it's the awe of the universe. Of yeah. the universe. Thank, right? th- thank you for answering that, and and um, we appreciate it. And, um, I, you know, was it worth the build up? I don't think so. Yeah. All right, I, uh, I still get. I feel. I feel people are going to judge us for asking that question. Somehow, it's your question. I know it's mine. Should we retire the question? I don't think. I think you're overthinking this. All right. All right. Enough. <laughs> we don't need to. Don't, o- don't overthink it. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> Just go with it. Be in All awe right. of the universe. All right. Exactly. Exactly. Professor Zachary McDowell, I want to say thank you for um, coming on and talking to us about this this fascinating subject. Mm-hmm. Um, I really probably could have gone a lot longer here. I had a lot more written down, but um, we know you're giving, you told us you're giving 
at least six other talks this week. All so, over the continent. Yeah, we're going to... No, in, in, in the next, like, two weeks. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Still, that's a and, lot. And, we don't... And, yeah. We don't want to wear you out. And yeah. South America as well. Yep. Uh, uh. <laughs> we don't, we don't want to wear you out, so... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, my sincerest thanks. We really appreciate you coming on and talking to us. Um, well, thank you for having me. Oh, I stomping, appreciate it and it's enjoying I'm sorry, uh, Stomping Jen, you didn't remind me. Was there anything else you wanted to say or um, anything else you wanted to cover before we say goodbye? I'm sorry, that was for you, Zach. Oh, oh, oh I know. You, <laughs> turned, you, you turned and said stopping. Jim. I know, I know, because he was he was and admonishing was like, me because I usually uh, 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 she, remind. Yeah, him. she usually uh, well remind. She usually yells at me at the end of every podcast. But it seemed like you had a good closer. So oh, I, I didn't, did. Yeah. Did so I ruin our close? Now you've like reopened the. the no, whole. no. I think I think I think that quote that you had exactly that yeah. summarizes okay. exactly what I'm trying to do right yeah. now. Yeah. All right. So yeah. go back, go back, and uh, listen to that, folks. All right, um, <laughs> Zach. Thank you so much. Um, stomping Jim. What do we need to say to our listeners? We love you. We do. And make sure to download the episodes. Yep. Subscribe. subscribe tell share a friend. with a friend. Tell a friend. That would be helpful. Leave a review. Yeah. If you're so inclined, if you yep. feel moved to do so. Yeah. And um, you know, connect with us on the socials and on we'll the socials. We'll see you out there. Yeah. Not okay. on the Wikipedia. On the so- <laughs> All right. Um, Zach, we have a tradition of signing off here. Our, our sign-off tag is by now. Um, we're going to let you go last. You're the distinguished guest here. Um, I'll go first, Stomping Jen, okay? Okay. And then we'll let you go, then Zach, okay? Oh, thanks. All right. Okay. Listeners, you heard it all. Uh, thanks. Um, bye now. Bye now. Bye now. This world of ours, ever growing smaller, must avoid becoming a community of dreadful fear and hate. Those who have freedom will understand also its heavy responsibility. That all who are insensitive to the needs of others will learn charity. And that the sources, scourges of poverty, disease, and ignorance will be made disappear from the earth. And that in the goodness of time, All peoples will come to live together in a peace guaranteed by the binding force of mutual respect and love. I shall never cease to do what little I can to help the world advance along that road. 